Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this uh, series of videos we are going to be covering the uh, 30 portion of chapter 5 which is about inventory. Um, I don't know how many videos it's going to take. I don't expect it to take too many. Uh, I'm guessing maybe three, four, maybe five, I don't know. But anyway, um, again it, it is theory so if you're not understanding this, you know, pause, rewind the video watch it again, read the textbook, and if you still don't understand something, you know, feel free to contact an instructor. I mean, our job is to help you understand that information. All right, so um, with that said, let me just move on here. All right. So on this introductory slide, um, I want to point out here that, I mean, most students um, who are in the business curriculum will have already taken Math for Business and Finance, or math applications and in the textbook for those subject for that subject um, chapter 18 was about inventory and overhead okay. and if you notice that the title of this chapter is called inventory so basically this is a, this chapter is a re repetition of what was in that textbook okay so if you've had math for business and finance you know none of this stuff should be new to you all right um, if uh, you're still, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into a ton of depth here because, like I said, um, most students have had math for business and finance. Um, you, we will get an occasional student who just takes financial accounting itself and therefore they haven't had math for business and finance. Um, with that, I'm going to say here's a link where uh, we created 30 videos for the math uh, and business and finance. So go, you know, go to this link and then uh, go to the chapter 18. And like I said, you'll see the theory videos for the chapter 18, which covers almost everything that we're going on, you know, that we'll be covering here. So, uh, you know, that's my suggestion. And if you, you know, just don't remember, even if you've had math for business, finance, business and finance, you know, go back and check out you know those videos in the math section okay it'll you know just a a different look you know more repetition the more you're, you're probably going to get it okay now um, for this series of videos and for this chapter as you can see I'm going to talk about cost of uh, goods available for sale I'm going to talk about the four inventory costing methods I'm going to talk about the gross profit method and then of course the focus on decision making and remember these videos are not a substitute for reading the textbook okay you're responsible for what's in the textbook uh, these are supplemental videos right um, to help further clarify and explain the you know the concepts and you know these are not being professionally done I mean I'm brain dumping I mean I'm just sitting here and I, I scan through the chapter he said, okay, here's where students seem to have problems. Um, here's important ideas and concepts. And I just made a, a quick bunch of slides and I'm just going to brain dump. Um, so, you know, I talk fast, I scribble, you know, I mean, that's why these are not professionally done and they're not uh, meant to replace what is in the textbook. So, you know, go back and read the textbook. Uh, you know, but, you know, I, I also understand that students, you know, you know sometimes need additional resources and so you know this here is like a one-on-one -on -one conversation in order to be able to hopefully help you get it and if you still don't understand that's what instructors are for you know you call and you speak with an instructor and we'll help you understand all right now um, the very you know I have here on the screen uh, the word the words goods available for sale all right now I don't have a separate slide for it because I don't think it, it warrants an entire slide and whatever have you so I'm just gonna scribble here um, when we talk about when you know if you've looked at since you've been through chapter 4 we know we have revenues less our expenses right which gives us a profit or loss okay and in the revenue section we expanded that to have our sales revenue less our discounts, less our return on allowance, which gave us a 
net sales revenue. Right? And then from the net sales revenue, we take away our cost of goods sold, okay, which gives us a gross profit. And then from the gross profit, we take out the expenses in order to get a profit or loss. This idea of the, um, well, right before I, I touch upon the goods available for sale, notice that this, how this simple concept of revenues less expenses has now been expanded, right? In our revenue section, now we have, you know, all of this, right? So we've expanded our revenue section, right? To include all of this. And what we're going to be doing is right now we're going to be saying we're looking we're going to look at the cost of goods sold right so this section the concepts for cost of goods sold is going to expand further and that's where this idea of goods available for sale comes from and the reason for our inventory methods okay remember this chapter is about inventory and in the previous chapter you know, I had said that whenever we make a sale, if we're selling something out of inventory, we have to make two journal entries, right? The first one was to record the sale, and the second one was to move the item that was in inventory out of inventory and put it to cost of goods sold. So that's where we're at. You know, this is what we're looking at right here. And this idea of goods available for sale fits right in this aspect here, okay? And this entire chapter fits within this aspect here. It's how we're treating our inventory, right? So that we can accurately account for it to get an accurate uh, expensing for our cost of goods sold. So I'm going to erase this. and talk about uh, the goods available for sale real quick. Okay, so, um, you know, I had also, I had said when you're learning this information, it's better to associate things, okay? Don't try to memorize everything brand new. So if you've been going along, you know that accounts receivable and accounts payable are two sides to the same coin. Okay. And you would also know that uh, uh, we can associate our accounts receivable to our sales, right? Because when we sell something on account, right, it's an accounts receivable. And the other side of the same coin for accounts payable is purchases. Well, this is what we're looking at here when we're thinking about inventory. Okay. We're, we're talking about our purchases because we're trying to account for our inventory. So um, when it comes to goods available for sale, you know, we're going to start with a beginning inventory. And that's going to be on our books. Well, let me, let me do it like this. Um, I'm going to call, I'm going to make this side our books and this side our physical Y can't even spell physical yeah, inventory okay this is our physical inventory meaning you know when we're sitting in the accounting office um, and someone goes out and buys something for inventory we're gonna get an invoice and it's gonna end up on our books okay and that item obviously is going to be put into let's just say we're storing in a warehouse that item is you know physically in our warehouse and the two should equal right because we bought one item and we didn't sell it yet, so it should be there, right? Now, if we we uh, if we buy a and I'm I'm kind of like jumping from the beginning of an, uh, an accounting period to the end of the accounting period, you know, if I start out my um, accounting period, I'm going to have a beginning inventory because I've made these purchases, right? And um, at the end of the accounting period, I'm actually going to do a physical inventory. And whatever that value is, 
I have to adjust my books to make sure that it's exactly the same, right? Because I can only account for what I have, okay? I can't have phantom uh, items on my books. In other words, I can't just write in, oh, I had a, a table, but that table doesn't exist. You know, that's called cooking the books. So we do a physical inventory, and whatever that amount is becomes our beginning inventory on our books, okay? Now, during the course of the accounting period, we're going to make purchases, okay? which is going to increase our inventory. And we're also going, you know, when we're dealing with those purchases, you know, we're able to take discounts if they're offered. Okay. And, you know, if something's broke or whatever have you, um, or, you know, replacement costs, whatever, we have returns and allowances, all right, that we can uh, uh, take advantage of. So those are decreases, all right, to that beginning inventory. And notice that per this here is exactly the same as our sales, you know, having discounts and return and allowances. It's the other side of the same coin, okay? So it's not, not any different. But the point being here is, is that when we have, um, we start out with our beginning in inventory, and then when we consider all of our purchases, right, that allows us to know what our goods available for sale are, right? These are the goods that are available for sale, okay? It is not our cost of goods sold, right? Meaning, if I had started out with 100000 in beginning inventory and I per and my purchases, my net purchases, meaning purchases, less returns and allowance, and less our discounts, let's say my, per uh, my purchases ended up being an additional 50000 Okay. My goods available for sale is 150,000. That is, you know, that's my goods available for sale. That is not my cost of goods sold, because why? I, you know, it doesn't reflect what was sold. Okay, I have 150,000 available, but when I take out, you know, let's say um, I sold 75,000 dollars worth. Okay. Well, that's 75,000 that I sold. That's my cost of goods sold. So my ending inventory ends up being 75,000, okay? I realize, I mean, we're gonna go through this and you've seen this in the math, uh, you know, in math for business and finance, right? But the whole idea here is I wanna introduce you to this concept of goods available for sale. You know, it's what we started with and what we could have sold. It doesn't take into consideration what we actually did sell. What we actually did sell is our cost of goods sold. Okay. And as we go through um, our costing methods and so on and so forth, especially our gross profit method, you'll see how um, this idea of cost, uh, goods available for sale and the relationship to the cost of goods sold is. Okay. So with that said, um, I, hope, I know that kind of like got a little uh, convoluted there in the writing. Um, let me just really quickly recap. You know, I started out with a beginning inventory of 100,000, and I was able to purchase an additional 50,000. So I have 150,000 of goods available, meaning it's what I can sell for sale. Okay. Now, if I have that 150,000, and I'm going to change the number here. Let's say I sell 60,000. Okay. Now my ending inventory is 90,000. Right. That's my ending inventory. This 60,000 is my cost of goods sold. This 150,000 is my goods available. Okay. All right. So with that said, I'm going to stop here and, um, you know, in the next video, I'm going to start on the different uh, inventory methods.